Hi, I'm Nigel Barker, and you're watching Cinemore. Here in New York, the Fashion Week Women's has officially started, and I hope you're on the edge of your seat. Every season, the city has the greatest shows from designers big and small, and now it's time to unveil their fall winter collections. Cinema will be updating you on the newest trends and gives you a sneak peek behind the scenes to see what is happening front and backstage. So it's not just a lucky few sitting front row, you're sitting right next to them and get the first looks too. These days the runway calls for extravaganza and no one understands that better than Christian Siriano. He proved it's possible to create red carpet showstoppers for all body types because his pieces come in size 2 to 28. He's showing at New York Fashion Week since 2008 and hasn't stopped doing that ever since. We got an exclusive behind the scenes look while the beauty team was working on their magic. Hi, it's Justine Marjan. I'm Tresemme's global stylist, and we're leading the hair backstage at Christian Siriano. You guys have a sort of love affair, right? You work together a lot. Yeah, we did Project Runway the past two seasons together, and then this is uh, my second time doing the hair for a show. Christian Siriano became one of the hottest designers ever since he won the fourth season of Project Runway. For the collection he showed at this New York Fashion Week, he assigned his hair and makeup artist to make the models look like a very specific pop culture heroine. When I walked up to see Christian on the day of the test, he immediately said, I'm super inspired by Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. And so it was basically that heart from the look that she has. And we'll go ahead and peel that off and see if it worked. There we go. This is why we're using our stencil. You guys will see later. And. Um, Basically, yeah, he just wanted like the Harley Quinn eye and the Harley Quinn heart. And then he wanted an orchid pink lip to match the whole collection. So the hair and makeup is loosely inspired by Harley Quinn. So we are adding hidden crown ponytails to all the girls that have a pop of blue and pink like Harley Quinn. And then we are slicking the hair back, just attaching the ponytails. So it's really clean and sleek in the front. And then the back, they have a pop of color. And then we're just finishing with the Tresemme soft styling spray in smooth. It's a dry oil spray that adds a lot of silky smooth texture to the hair. Lots of fashionistas gathered for the super elegant runway show, and they seemed to like it a lot. First reaction on the show? Um, his best one ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why? I've, I've probably seen 10 years of Christian's shows, and I think this was boundary pushing for him, and um, was so creative in his use of shapes and silhouettes, and really, he pushed it. Everything was phenomenal from the the whole setup to all the models and like the last walk was, oh my God, was it for me? Especially the ball dresses. I'm Pamela Rowland and welcome to my backstage. We're going to be on in about an hour or so, so we're so excited to have this show and we're so excited to have you here. Pamela Rowland is one of the go-to designers for celebrities. Her creations are chic, stylish, daring, and simply made for the red carpet. It's no surprise she has such an A-list clientele. I think because I make gowns and I think beautiful gowns, I think that's why I have a following. Um, I mean, is it important? I think it's important for the business. Um, and it certainly has helped our business. So we always try to, we try to make the celebrities happy, yes. Can you tell me a bit about the inspiration for the new? Uh, our inspiration for our fall 2020 is Versailles. It's you know the beautiful, amazing uh, place outside of um, Paris. It's, I, every time I go there, I bring somebody new. I said you have to go through Versailles. So looking at the chandeliers and the architecture, and the furniture, the wall of mirrors, and I mean it's just something that you'll see in this collection quite a bit. 
While Pamela was in charge of the outfits, she had the models prepped by hairstylist extraordinaire Bebe Dalia. For the collection for Pamela Rowland today, they are it's super glamour, by the cast is, you know, with the beautiful girls. The clothes is just amazing, they like the couture. The, the hair is super, uh, it's, uh, like it's easy, but you know, with the big, the big way on the back. Just clean here, like a, you know, like a beautiful girl, sexy girl, so the big wave on the back. And last of all, the models' looks were given their finishing touches by makeup artist Rick DeSecca. Think about you know doing your makeup six o'clock at night and you go out dancing. So it's sort of late night at Versailles, you know, it's worn out. It looks a little bit worn out. You know, maybe it's creeping down underneath your lashes. Your cheek color's a little faded. Um, and your lips, your lipstick is faded. So we used matte lip on the, matte on everybody, but five or six different shades of matte based on their skin tone. The anticipation for this show was very high, as Roland is a big name indeed. Naturally, lots of celebs were present. What are you expecting of Pamela's show today? Oh, I expect just like glamour and beauty, and she has kind of those masculine and feminine elements that play off of each other. So I'm really excited to see what design she has coming on the runway today. Every single one of her dresses is pretty spectacular, so I'm really wondering to see what the theme of this, of this season is. And it did not disappoint. Everyone loved it. Oh, I thought it was incredible. She is such an amazing designer, and every single piece was so romantic and had such beautiful movement and just stunning. One trend we've noticed in the fashion industry is that Korea is on the rise. They already took the world by storm with K-pop and Korean cosmetics, but now it looks like they're making a foothold in fashion too. There were three shows in New York under the collective Concept Korea. The brands showing their stuff were Issei, Lei, and Lai, and we met up with the designer of the latter. Concept Korea, tell me about it. Yeah, it's a uh, represent like Korean fashion. They every time they select the designers every year, so we uh, we are very proud of uh, we are uh, being here. Yeah, like represent Korean fashion. Yes. Now, what is it exactly that makes Korean fashion stand out? Yeah, the Korean fashion is really fast, really quick. We represent like uh, many trend the themes and our collection. And me too, because I, 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 I always are checking the like, what's the trend, and then we're very quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a Korean fashion, I think. Your first reaction on the show? I loved it, definitely. It gave me some Scandinavian um, of vibes mixed with Korea, so I loved it, yes. I know they always have like very minimal stuff, but like really great structure, so I'm expecting to see more of that. Well, it was very, in a sense, very basic, but then with the slight designs at the shoulders or at the bottom, you know, you could see that it was a little, they gave a little bit more attention to the details, which was really nice, yeah. We've already seen stars like Jamie Chung, Haley Khalil, and Victoria Justice earlier on in the episode. But there were plenty more famous faces that flocked to the Big Apple to indulge in the latest fashion. Take America's Got Talent winner Bianca Ryan, for instance. I'm just so excited. Like, I've never been to New York Fashion Week before. This is actually my first time. I always, like, avoided it because I thought it was, like, so crazy and rushed. And um, this year, I really just wanted to be a part of it and dive into it. And I'm so happy I did. It's been so much fun. One trend we're noticing more and more these days is that designers often use presentations for their collections instead of or in addition to runway shows. This way, people can take their time to admire the outfits. Actress, author, and above all, fashion lover Jenny Molin is a fan of this movement. I think a presentation's so much better for photos, especially in the age of Instagram. When you go to a fashion show, I see these photos online. I'm like, you can't tell what you're looking at. It just gives you a sense of like the mood of the room and that they move too fast. 
Whereas here, it's like I can capture each look and I feel like I'm stepping into the story with her. We also bumped into social media phenomenon Natty Natasha, who was looking for things to share with her 22 million Instagram followers. I'm looking at the cool stuff and just enjoying, enjoying the day. How would you describe your personal style? I would say fresh, fun, colorful, shiny. <laughs> no, you don't go to an event like New York Fashion Week without getting all glammed up, even when very pregnant, like socialite and model Tessa Hilton. How did you choose the outfit of today? You look awesome. Up <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, it was also one of the only ones that fit at the moment. <laughs> but I just love the glitter and the shine, and it, but also it kind of covers up, so it has that sort of sexiness, but not too sensual. But the celebs didn't have to go all out. Sometimes keeping it simple works even better. I have a jacket, um, a trench coat, which is a sort of classic, right? It's been a staple since the First World War, but it's having a comeback. And this is made by Trench London. Um, so they sent me a, a couple of coats for Fashion Week, and that happens a lot. I get sent clothes, and I pick the stuff that I really like, but I like classic stuff. I like stuff that's sort of more timeless, has a sort of iconic feel. One of the most impressive and jaw-dropping shows this year was that of Sergio Hudson. The rising star has already dressed the likes of Michelle Obama and Beyonce, and now made his New York Fashion Week debut. You can expect a lot of glam. You can expect a lot of structured pieces. I have a strong aesthetic, and I'm very driven. My aesthetic is more that of a woman that would dress up. You know, when she gets up in the morning, she thinks about what she wears. She really plans her outfit, so that's the Sergio Hudson woman, and I'm just going to show who that is today. And what inspired you for this new collection? Well, this collection was inspired by, I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, and it's inspired by all those great R&B, pop rock singers of that time. And during that time, you know, I feel like the singers would think about, like, they're that woman, like, when you saw them, they shoes, they match their dress, and they purse, you know, so it's kind of like very, you know, put together. We went backstage before the show started and ran into makeup artist Marcella Costa. There we are again. How are you? Hi, guys. Hi, everybody from Cinema Arts. Marcella here. Uh, thank you so much for coming again to Sasha Hurdson uh, collection. And I'm super excited because you know what I'm noticing this season? That everybody's going 90s. So bigger the hair, yeah. close to Jesus. Can you get better than that? We totally get why Marcella was so excited about the phenomenal hairdos, but he was actually in charge of the makeup. What is 90s makeup? Imagine the bodyguard, Whitney Houston. Boom, 90s. Imagine Cindy Crawford at the Pepsi commercial. That look, you know, those kind of hair and makeup of the sexy, uh, uh, sexy Cameron Diaz uh, kind of thing. That's what the 90s really is. The fantastic hairdos are the proud creations of Aubrey Lutz, who definitely had his hands full with all the models. Sergio wanted that strong, powerful 90s woman. He sent me an image of big hair that went all the way back. And yesterday in the test, I pushed it to the side to give a bit of a wave and to make her a little bit more feminine. And I showed him both and he loved the wave. So yes, I did have some, some creative freedom. And the final result was a truly enchanting runway. It oozed 90s power women, so we'd say mission accomplished. Hi, I'm Stacy Bendette, and you're watching Cinema. I'm standing right in the setting of the Alison Olivia presentation, which is always one of my personal highlights during the Fashion Week. And it always seems to attract more exciting people every season. Brain behind the brand is Stacey Bendit, and her goal is to design for everyday life, nightlife, and create pieces that fit into a working woman's world. Alison Olivia is sexy and sophisticated, and Stacey's style rule is be yourself or be someone else, but make sure it's a full look. 
always like the fact that you do presentation instead of a show. Can you tell me why you, you make that decision? Um, I like to do a presentation because I feel like it allows us to show the clothes in a way that's more dramatic and it tells a story. Um, clothes are very beautiful walking down the runway, but you miss a lot of what those clothes mean and where they came from. And I think when you put them in a setting, they come to life. It's like art on a wall in a gallery versus a home. I think I've always been drawn to Alice and Olivia because I love the fact that her clothes don't take themselves too seriously and they are bold and they're colorful and there's fun prints and I love that because to me like fashion is all about making statements and having fun and wearing things that make you feel good and her clothes make me feel really good. I think Alice and Olivia is a wonderful company. Or, um, brand and I love all of their clothes always. I feel like they're so young and fun but also sophisticated. I have loved their stuff for a very long time and am obsessed with this outfit. This is all Alice and Olivia and I'm very excited. I love that her entire line has such an amazing message though. There's writing inside of this jacket and it says you are beautiful and uh, that's everything that I stand for. I mean, every woman who wears our clothes and comes to support our brand and our show is, you know, I'm, I'm grateful, I'm thankful, and it's fun. I think what part of what our brand is is about bringing women together to enjoy fashion and have fun and feel good. And when people come to our show and can be inspired, I mean, that, that makes me proud. We caught up with Japan's Tadashi Shoji just before he unveiled his fall winter line, inspired by the Mongolian Empire and the meeting of Eastern and Western styles. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. I'm very excited. Yeah. 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 Usually, I don't get so much excited, but this season, uh, which we did more drama, I think, for the, the you know lineup. So, and then also model is all different size and different uh, nationality and uh, age. Also like 17 years old to 45 years old lady. So it's diversity, that makes me uh, excited. Do you have the feeling, because to me, uh, there are lots of designers using different types of models on the catwalk. To me, it feels like you were the first, but how are you feeling about that? That is like because, because our company, from beginning, is any women, any size, any nationality, any age. Meanwhile, backstage, the designer had some of the best support staff in the business. Can you try and describe the feeling that is in this backstage room? Oh, the feeling. I mean, I've worked with hair with this hair team for over 10 years, so there's a really great energy and a synergy between all of us, and our teams vibe really well with their, their team, so it's, I mean, it's 11.15 and we're, um, we're practically done. So it's kind of unheard of <laughs> backstage, but we're really lucky that we kind of, um, we respect each other's space, we work really well with each other. So, and at the end of the day, it's not about us, it's about Tadashi. Brooklyn-based designer and celebrity favorite Romeo Hunt is definitely one to watch. He is taking the fashion world by storm with his avant-garde creations. And for his newest collection, he teamed up with his idol Tommy Hilfiger, who he always considered as his mentor. Tommy gave 12 vintage pieces that he donated from his personal archive for Romeo to create something fresh and new. And he is showing it here at the Fashion Institute of Technology. So tell me about this special collaboration. So I brought this to actually highlight and support um, sustainability and 
you know, let's not throw away these great classic pieces and that I feel like now the, res the reselling um, industry is stepping up a lot and it's, I I'm looking at it as like, why not make your piece something else? The presentation for the eco-friendly label Cho Chang, we met up with brand manager Alex Barlow. Sustainability is absolutely inbuilt in the very DNA of the brand. And how do you do that? He only works with natural fabrics, so there's a huge amount of transparency in his suppliers. Uh, he works largely with a lot of British heritage suppliers who've been creating fabrics for hundreds of years. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a balance between sustainability but also supporting uh, traditional craftsmanship. Designer Nicole Miller is always looking for new ways to repurpose wasteful products. My current project is to um, reuse all these Amazon envelopes because I just get so crazy when everybody throws away these Amazon envelopes, the blue and white ones. So I've been making tote bags out of all the Amazon bags. So I think that's one way of like reusing it, but also it gets the message out there. And at the Fashion for a Cause event, another Project Runway winner, Sebastian Gray, made his Fashion Week debut and had a strong message to share. What do you find of all the fast and the slow fashion and the sustainability? A lot of designers are, 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 are using that a lot. I think it's an amazing movement that is happening right now in the fashion industry. And not only in the fashion industry, the entire world is being more conscious that we have to be more sustainable and be more friendly with the environment. And I just want to send a message out there because a lot of brands are using this vegan leather but they are cheating people because it's plastic, so it's worse than natural leather. So I want to people to get more educated about what is being sustainable, really, because buying plastic is worse. Hi, my name is Alexandra Ship, and we are at Christopher John Rogers. I'm expecting a lot of color, a lot of texture, and some incredibly beautiful Afrocentric vibes. What was the inspiration behind this collection? A lot of things that I've been inspired by and obsessed with since I moved to New York. So, really colorful debris, crumpled trash bags, crumpled carryout bags, um, and those sort of deformed shapes. Like, how do you make those things fashion? So, I'd say that and then also serendipity and the idea of happenstance and a lot of the samples that came back from the garment district were a mess and not what we wanted but we pinned and tucked and ruched and draped and finessed and came up with something beautiful and that to me is such an emotional process that the clothes end up being emotional. And sure enough that's pretty much exactly what we got from the rising style star. Roger's designs have been spotted on ladies like Lizzo, Tracy Ellis Ross and Cardi B not that he cares. Yeah, I don't think that you have to be famous to enjoy fashion and enjoy expressing yourself. And whether you buy CJR or you buy something else, or you go to the store and recycle or you make it yourself. Like, take the time to really figure out what makes you happy, what makes you feel like you in the moment, which can be different day to day, and celebrate that and don't shy away from it. So. I hope that you buy CJR and I hope that you're able to enjoy it. Um, but if not, like find a way to just you know, exist in fashion and be happy. And just like that, the New York Fashion Week Women's has come to an end. And what a whirlwind experience it was. As you can see, colors aren't going anywhere this fall winter season. And I'm happy to see that the 90s are making a comeback with their glamorous looks and their sexy big hair. And green is not only a color that is here to stay, it's also a message. Sustainability leads the way as the designers are producing more and more eco-friendly collections to create awareness. But let's not forget, fashion is fun. 
Thank you for watching Cinema and see you soon from another fashionable city. Bye bye!